Check this out, guys. This patient presented with a denture where the midline is off like three feet. It is a whole entire tooth or two to the right um, of the, the patient's right. And you can see here, there is no borders. Everything's just kind of loose and flopping around in there. The occlusion's a little bit off and we just have an ill-fitting denture. I'm not even so sure this is his denture. It's just a denture that he kind of has. And so what I typically do in these instances is I start over with some nice intraoral scans. Here I'm using the Trios 5. Great retraction here. Now on the lower, you want to go retromyelial highway fossa on both sides and get at least two-thirds up the retromyelial pad. Make sure you're using some good retractors. You've trained your team properly and you understand what you're doing here. Then it's very predictable. Once you capture these fully mucostatic impressions, you're gonna find that the fits are phenomenal if you do the little trick at the end of this video. Now, we have the arches just floating in air. Now we have two options. We could use the mod denture record system with the video gauge to get the proper vertical, or we could reline the old dentures and scan those in and merge them in ExoCAD, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And also this could act as a backup in case I wanna use this to actually fabricate the fitting denture. Although I won't, I'll use the intraoral scan because it's going to fit better. So we reline these with some light body polyvinyl siloxane. We're scanning them 360 here with the trios. And then I'm going to put them back in the mouth and capture the bite at the proper vertical. And I did equilibrate this denture before I captured this bite to make sure I was happy with everything. Bilateral bites. And then I'm going to export those partial denture in ExoCAD, add connectors. And then we're going to go ahead and load all the files. And what's cool is the dentures are going to come in the proper vertical all aligned, but the soft tissue scans are going to be all over the place. So I'm going to go to expert mode, tools, align meshes, and I'm going to pin the soft tissue scans in the mouth to the denture. I'm going to use this cool feature where we invert and only select certain areas for the alignment so that the borders don't distract from the iterative closest point alignment. So you can see here, just a quick little paint invert and then align and then look at the best fit match. Beautiful vertical now. And now we're gonna go ahead and select our path of insertion, facial 45 degrees, and allow um, up to half a millimeter undercuts, zero smoothing at a negative 30 degree angle. I'm gonna load some random teeth in here. It doesn't matter because I'm gonna replace them. So I added some teeth and now I'm gonna go to expert mode, add custom tooth models, and I'm gonna load a previously done setup that's in perfect occlusion. So you only need to do a cool setup once or twice. You could save those and have those forever. And this was a setup that I uh, had done a while ago that I really liked. So I'm just going to load that in, get it close to his pre-op denture. And now I'm going to load the face scan. So first with the retracted, this is from the ray face. I'm going to pin it to the uh, teeth of the pre-op denture, paint the areas I want it to use, and then best fit match. And then I'm going to load the smile. I'm going to use features of the face that are in areas that did not move, soft tissue areas that are fixed, and then perform best fit alignment. Right click edit face scan and remove the teeth from the face scan so that I could see my wax up and I'm going to move the midline over, get everything the way that I want it, orientate where the lowers are centered over the crest of the ridge, just like that. And now also we are now in the freeform stage back into the wizard and I'm going and adapting to the soft tissue, the pontix, removing any excess root structure just really quickly smoothing them out. Be careful when you do this, as you can see, number eight, I messed up the CEJ, super easy to do, but also a very easy fix in the freeform tab where you can just kind of grab it and move it and smooth it. <clears throat> okay, now we're marking our borders. This is super easy. I could actually see the folds of the muscles coming down, the buccinator attaching to the maxilla. I could see all my muscle attachments. I could even throw on the color scan if I wanted to way better than his old denture but look at where that lingual the labial frenum is on the maxilla that's what threw off the previous technician who did the old denture that's why the midline was off by three feet on the lower we're also going to mark our borders and now we're going to do some fest tuning now there's nothing wrong with just leaving it smooth you could save 10 minutes on design you could print them and polish them and that is fine however i'm in love with fest tuning i do find some joy in it and it only takes me three to five minutes to do so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Why not? And I'm going to show you guys. I tend to um, make sure that I have a good starting point when I festoon. Nothing is too thin. I have my papillas stretched in the proper locations. I go to my add remove tool and then I start to add some shapes here. Usually H's on the premolars, Y's distal to the cuspid, W there on the lateral, M on the centrals. Let's just repeat. Super easy. We'll smooth that up. 
in a minute here. And I also add my sulcus. This is where like the gingival um, sulcus will be, and it forms a little gingival cuff around each tooth using my add tool, my small paintbrush. I'm not going to smooth all that up, but what's cool is under the anatomic large and small regions, you could stretch and move things, and it keeps all your festooning. Very generic and V-shaped festooning on the lower, around the centrals, and then just standard on the on the molar, premolar area, very minor. And one thing you'll notice that it looks intense on the digital design, but it's really not. And then I do candy coat these so that fills in a lot of the hard to clean areas. Connectors are automatic. I'm just going to hit next. And then one millimeter minimum thickness underneath the tooth pocket. And then 200 microns gap anterior, posterior. Guys, whoever is like selling you ExoCAD should be like showing you this stuff. It's pretty basic. And then what we're going to do now is <clears throat> get our pockets on the lower. Same thing. One millimeter min thickness under the teeth, 200 microns, cement gap, anterior and posterior. I'm just checking one more time for my anterior posterior position of the teeth. I want to be hitting right there at the wet dry line of the lip, making sure I'm not too prominent. Okay, last step. We're all done. We have the final files, except now I'm going to go to free form. And I'm going to go ahead and hit gingival base. And I'm going to just fix one little thing here um, where I'm a little bulky on the buccal flange. I'm going to add my posterior palace seal. Super easy. Go to um, distance to scan data. And you're going to go ahead and paint your retention. Remember, we did a scan. So that's mucostatic, zero pressure. And so now I have to add back that pressure. 200 microns along the border, one and a half on the posterior palatal seal. Doesn't matter if you do a butterfly shape, cat ear shape, or whatever shape you do. On the mandible, 200 microns around the border and then up to half a millimeter on the straight lingual right there. That is going to be intense pressure to counteract the buckle undercut to make this thing snap in. Um, you have to pip it to make sure you're not hurting the patient there, but that is how we add. And then a little bit, uh, 300 to 500 on the buckle flange right there. That is it, guys. Look at this thing. It's incredible. Let's see how we did with the patient. So um, now that we have our properly uh, retained denture, we could try it in and look at what we got here. Super happy patient, super fast to do these. Um, it's remarkably easy once you get the hang of it. Take out one of my denture courses online maybe and, and start learning how to do some design and just learn these workflows because they're incredible.